One of the greatest things about PC gaming in general is the freedom to play how you want to play, and one of the key points to that is custom controls. A lot of people don't take the time to look, but customizing your controls can drastically improve your in-game performance and overall game enjoyment. Steam VR is conceptually different to regular PC gaming in that when it comes to bindings, it is not the game's responsibility. Whereas you customize your pancake keybinds in game, when it comes to Steam VR content, you do it through Steam VR itself and not through the game. This applies not only to your native Steam VR games like Half Life Alex, but also to anything you play through Revive. If you've had a look at the controller bindings interface, known as Steam VR Input, there's a good chance you've struggled to work with it. That's where this guide comes in. I'm going to walk you through the most useful bindings that I use so that you can get more out of your VR experience and we're going to go through things step by step. So let's start with the Sprint binding. This applies to all controllers. In VR we have a carryover from console gaming and that is the click the stick to sprint binding. In my opinion this is not a great binding and has never felt particularly intuitive. Additionally, clicking your sticks will accelerate their degradation and is something you generally want to avoid. What I like to do is have my analog stick move me around as usual. As you push the stick further and further, increasing its deflection, you want to move faster and faster, and then at the very end, start sprinting. This is suitable for games where you are primarily sprinting. For this example, I am using The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Open the Steam VR overlay. To do this, click either system button on a native Steam VR controller. For Oculus Touch controllers, the system button on the left controller should work. For other controllers, I'm not sure. From here, click the settings cog to the right side of the dashboard, and then the controllers tab, manage controller bindings, custom, and edit this binding. This is how we edit bindings for any game. I have already edited this binding, so to better demonstrate the changes, I will revert to the default. To do this, I click the back button to the top left. I then look for the official bindings header and activate them. I now edit my current binding, which we just set to default. Click the plus icon in the top right corner of the left thumbstick and then select a button. From here, click onto the click action and select sprint. Then click the settings cog to the bottom right corner of the button and set it to generate click from position and set the activation threshold to 95. Now when the stick moves 95% toward its outer limit, this click action will activate and we will sprint. The reason I select 95 instead of 100% is because, at least on my controllers, 100 never activates. This may be different for you. So, if we go back in game, I simply move the stick all the way forwards and can sprint. And in games that allow sprinting sideways, you can do that as well. This is great for games where you sprint a lot, however in Saints and Sinners we have a stamina bar, so we'll be spending most of our time walking. For these types of games, it's helpful to be able to push the thumbstick all the way forwards without sprinting. Instead, we can require a double click of this action to sprint, and this is easy to set up. All we have to do is go back to the binding screen, and where we added a button with a click action, click on the pencil icon, Click more options and now you will see the double press option. Click into this and bind it to sprint. For the single click action, click into it and bind it to none which removes the binding and then return to the game. We can now move the stick all the way forwards without sprinting, but if we move the stick all the way forwards two times in a short period we will now sprint. This one is index specific. One of the strong points about the index controllers is the ability to naturally grab and release things. 
there's no button involved so it feels great as long as the game has been set up appropriately. In my opinion many games get it wrong but games like Boneworks and Into the Radius they do a good job. For a lot of other games I recommend some tweaks. The main issue I encounter is unsuitable thresholds for grabbing and releasing. Such as in this game, you can see that I wrap my hand around the controller handle, yet I cannot pick up the weapon. It is not until I apply some force by squeezing the handle that I can pick up the weapon. The index controllers have many capacitive sensors along the handles. To grab something, there is an activation threshold where some percentage of these sensors have been activated. When you wrap your fingers fully around the controller, the capacitive sensors are effectively at 100%. In addition to the capacitive sensors, there is a force sensor on the handle, which works as a second grab stage. Once you are fully gripping the handle, you can enter this second stage by squeezing the controller with some force. Some games require an amount of force prior to grabbing, as we see in Saints and Sinners. Here you see the two stages together, with the capacitive stage in blue and the force stage in orange. To fix this problem, we drag the activation slider back to the blue region. I use 100%. Drag the release slider down to a low value. I'm using 10%. Now if we go back in game, you will be able to pick things up simply by grabbing the controller handle without requiring any force. As we selected a low release threshold, we can let go of the handle quite a bit before we actually drop the item. To drop sooner, or to help account for sweaty hands, we could increase the release threshold. This one is for the Valve designed controllers only, the Index controllers and the Vive ones. This is because they uniquely feature dual stage triggers and this is very helpful when you want to make precise shots with a firearm. If you have a regular trigger, such as the trigger on a, a touch controller or a DualShock 4, you squeeze it gradually, you keep squeezing it, and you never quite know when it will fire. It could fire at the very end or somewhere before then, but you cannot feel this point out. You cannot reliably hold the trigger on the very edge of firing and be ready, and this can be problematic. All of the Valve designed controllers, even the Steam controller, feature dual stage triggers. This means we have the same kind of trigger as on other controllers, but at the end of the trigger we hit a wall. We feel some clear resistance. We now know precisely where we are. We know that once we perform the final click, the weapon will fire. This is very helpful, particularly for lining up long range shots in Into the Radius. Into the Radius has great bindings out of the box and actually makes use of the dual stage triggers, but many games do not, Pavlov included. Though fear not, as we can rectify that. To fix this, we go into the bindings. In this game, trigger right is used to fire. By default, it is bound to a button. Change this to a trigger, and the click binding should remain as trigger right. With no further changes, we have fixed it. Return to the game and we can test the binding. When using dual stage triggers, we pull the trigger. We know it won't fire at any point in this range until you reach the very end. You can feel when you are at the very end, so you know you are on the edge of firing. You can line up your shot, pull the trigger to the very end, and then fire with confidence. At the very end, you just click in the trigger and it fires. Here's an example for Boneworks, one of my favourites. I've got a gun here, let's load it. Very nice. It tracks the finger all the way, but when I depress the trigger it just fires at some point in the middle like Pavlov does. So let's go to the bindings. What you need to do is figure out which action is responsible for firing the weapon. So you have to experiment a bit. I've found that for Boneworks it is trigger position. So what I'm going to do is unbind that by replacing it with none. If we go back in game, the weapon no longer fires, and that's good. That means we have found what is responsible for firing. Let's go back to the bindings and add a second trigger binding, and set the click to trigger position, which we found to fire the weapon. 
If you have multiple trigger bindings, they function simultaneously. They do not write over each other. Now when we pull the gun out, we can move the trigger all the way and it won't fire until we click it in at the very end. This is also helpful for rapid firing the weapon, as we know exactly where the actuation point is. Have you ever wanted a button to crouch in Phasmophobia or some other game that doesn't support a crouch button? Well, that's not a problem anymore because we can bind one ourselves, regardless of whether the game wants us to do it and it will work in every single app that runs in Steam VR. This is a great accessibility binding that can help people with some disabilities to get more out of their games, but it still applies to everyone. However, it's most practical for users who have index controllers due to their additional binding surface. To set this up, we need some additional software called OpenVR Advanced Settings. You can get it on Steam for free. There's a link in the description. This tool supports space offsets, which we will use to implement a crouch button. We will press a button and it will shift our play space down vertically to simulate a crouch. Open the Steam overlay, click the advanced settings icon toward the left side of the dashboard and click the motion tab. We're going to use the height toggle. I use a value of 0.5 which will shift me down vertically by 0.5 meters. We can test this now by clicking the on checkbox. Use a value that gives you a suitable crouch and then leave this box unchecked. Once we have a suitable value, we need to bind it. Go back to the main advanced settings page and click bindings. This opens the bindings for the advanced settings app. Ensure the motion tab is active and now we can bind our crouch button. I put mine onto the north side of the right touchpad. Do this by adding a D-pad to the right touchpad. You will then get a D-pad like this one. The default mode is click and you bind north to height toggle. You will see a list of options like this. Here is where you find the height toggle. If you don't see it, ensure you are on the motion tab. The binding is now ready for use. So first close the steam overlay, then click touchpad north and you will crouch. Click it again and you will uncrouch, repeat to your heart's desire. And this will work in every game. Here I am in Cookout. This one is again index specific. In this game we have squeezy ketchup and to squeeze the ketchup out we grab the bottle and then pull the trigger, which is a bit boring. The developer probably did not have access to index controllers. To improve this, let's go into the bindings and find out which action is responsible for squeezing the bottle. Let's look at the trigger and we see it is aptly named Squeeze. Now let's go to the grip. I have already customized these controls, but what you need to do is add a new grab binding to the grip and set it to Squeeze. In the settings for that grab binding, set it to require force. I set the activation threshold to 95 and the release to 70. In the advanced settings there are similar force options. I'm not clear on the difference between the top two advanced settings and the basic settings but I set the advanced settings to match. Now if you go back in game and pick up the ketchup we can literally squeeze the controller handle to squirt out the ketchup and this is much more fun. And just to make it clear now, when we do grab bindings, you do need to replicate them between controllers unless the bindings are created in mirror mode, as they were for this game. I hope you found this guide to be helpful. The specifics of binding controls can vary between games. All of the examples in this video use the newer input APIs but there is also a legacy API that works a bit differently and you see it used on older titles. The names of in-game actions varies between games but hopefully this proved to be a good starting point for you. Finally, I just want to address the toilet roll. This does not interfere with the capacitive sensors at all. 
finger tracking works fully even with a layer of toilet roll between the hand and the controller. The reason I use this is because my palms sweat and I think this is a great workaround. If you have sweaty palms then at some point during gameplay as sweat accumulates on the grip you will begin to struggle to drop things and this is problematic. It's easy to shim a layer of toilet roll without looking and I hope this helps those of you who have similar issues. You can then enjoy the index controllers as intended. Thanks for watching. There's also a written guide on my website linked in the description. If you've got anything to say, feel free to leave a comment or use the contact form on my website. Good day.